Before you go off with that, you idiot, it's away, not away stuff. I do know the difference. In fact, I own a handy copy of the Illustrated Nautical Dictionary, unabridged. Anyhow, a weighing anchor, or lifting it from the water, which was actually called a trip in old nautical terms, and is the root of our common phrase, going on a trip, is not what this video is about. We're going to look at putting away anchors, or the reason for the birth of the self-stowing anchor. For many years, early Great Lakes shipping vessels had anchors with huge wooden stocks. Eventually, that wooden stock was replaced by steel. And then by stockless anchors. Most of us boat nerds have seen the photos of the lake boats with those cool stockless anchors. However, there was soon found to be one problem. You see, lake boats, unlike saltwater ships, spend far more time maneuvering in tight waterways. Whether loading, unloading, Or locking. They are always working quite close to one another, and in the early 1900s glancing blow collisions were almost a daily event. These normally minor brushes with one another could be greatly intensified when one vessel's protruding anchor dug into another boat's hull plating. A good example took place on the unlucky morning of June 13, 1905. The brand new ore boat Sylvania was on her way downbound on Lake Superior from Duluth with a full load of iron ore. Under the command of Captain J. W. Eberhardt, she was on just the third trip of her career and was running in a thick fog off Whitefish Point. At the same time, the big steamer Sir Henry Bessemer was headed upbound without cargo. She was under the charge of Captain William S. Hogue. This was decades before there were any established traffic lanes on the lakes, and it was up to each captain to set a safe course and a safe speed based on weather conditions. Neither captain did that, and when the Bessemer loomed out of the fog, both masters had just enough time to order a hard turn to starboard. Low in the water with a full cargo of iron ore, the Sylvania glanced against the towering hull of the unloaded Bessemer, and should have just bounced off. Instead, her port anchor snagged on the Bessemer, punctured the hull, and tore along, ripping a three-foot-wide gash, damaging 24 plates and breaking 60 frames before ripping itself loose and dropping into Lake Superior. The Sylvania continued downbound. The Bessemer turned around and headed back to the Sioux. No one was hurt. The Bessemer continued down to Cleveland to be repaired at a cost of $40,000, which would be $1,207,538 in 2021. Meanwhile, the Sylvania was repaired at a cost of $10,000, which would be... $301,884 in 2021. Eleven months later, both captains had their licenses suspended by the Steamboat Inspector's Office for 60 days, which would be 60 days in 2021. Looking at this problem as early as 1902 was Captain Joseph Kidd of Duluth. Kidd was one of the most prolific marine engineers on the Great Lakes and was an early partner with Alexander McDougall in the development of the whaleback freighter. His solution to the problem was what would become known as the self-stowing anchor, which Kidd patented in 1903. The concept was, rather than protruding from the bow plating, the flukes of the anchor would be pulled behind the bow plating, leaving only the crown and shoulders of the anchor exposed. This would leave the anchor nearly flush with the bow plates of the boat. 
it would reduce the protrusion from what Kidd estimated to be as much as five feet, depending on the size of the anchor. The first lake boat to support this new look was the Frank C. Ball, launched on December 9, 1905. Owned by the Globe Steamship Company, the Ball went to work immediately in the Tomlinson fleet. Self-stowing anchors at the time were very much an experiment, as later boats launched for the same company had the old external anchors. Oddly, the self-stowing anchor never really caught on, because the recessed box anchor, which was a variation of it, came into play just a few years later. However, the design was used as late as 1913, the package freighter Boston being a good example of that. No statistics were kept as to how much collision damage was prevented by the self-stowing anchor. After all, no one in those days bothered to track damage that didn't happen. So we really don't know how effective the design was. Amazingly, today there is still one existing example of the self-stowing anchor that anyone can go and see in person. It is on the National Museum of the Great Lakes ship in Toledo, Ohio.